Welcome to The Bridge, a podcast for dental professionals featuring the insights and expertise of fellow dental professionals. Let's welcome our host, Stephen Cusa. Hello, Bridge Dental Podcast listeners. This is Steve Cusa with a special introduction for Dr. David Galler, our special guest in today's episode. Uh, Dr. Galler uh, graduated with high honors from the University of Pennsylvania College of Dentistry. He completed his general practice residency at Brooklyn Veterans Administration Hospital. He's originally from New York, practiced for 20 years in downtown Manhattan. After that, moved to Chicago where he practiced and and has continued his growth throughout the country. And now um, goes back and forth between New York, Chicago, Vegas, uh, all the way to Vancouver. Uh, Dr. Galler has uh, probably transformed thousands of smiles with the Invisalign aligners. And those of you who know him, he's created uh, quite the following known as the Gallerites. And um, their following continues to grow with the American Academy of Clear Aligners. Check them out. Dr. Galler also has inventions such as the Galler spacing technique, and uh, Dennis have been using that nationwide. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this episode. We get into a little bit of the secret sauce of Dr. Galler and what it takes to be a full-time dentist, a full-time innovator, and a full-time comedian, amongst other things. Can't wait for you to listen. Hey, good evening, Bridge Dental Podcast listeners. This is Steve Cusa, your resident financial advisor for dentists. I got a special, special, special guest with us today. Dr. David Galler kind of needs no intro. Dr. Galler joining us from Vancouver, British Columbia. Dr. Galler, how you doing? Doing good. Thank you for having me on the show. Of course, of course. And um, we are I'm actually pretty excited because normally I do these at eight in the morning and we're doing it at eight and night. I kind of got some espresso energy going. I'm excited to talk to you and dive in, dive in deep with you. So I love it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get crazy. So for those of you who don't know Dr. Galler, uh, this is my description, is full, full-time comedian, full-time dentist, uh, full-time president ACA, full-time amazing individual, just a lot of different things going on. So Dr. Galler, I actually thought it'd be fun uh, if I start off with a little joke. Is that cool? Absolutely. <laughs> so this is your intro. Um, this is I found this review. It's 15 years old. I don't know if you've seen this, but I actually thought it was hilarious. So if it's a terrible attempt, I'm going to cut this out entirely. Okay. Uh, so it describes, uh, this was obviously one of your patients at the time. Dr. Galler is one of the best Invisalign dentists in the country. His office is modern. His staff is friendly. You feel very much at home there. Thought my teeth would always be ugly. And now my teeth look amazing. And I look awesome. I still hate dentists, but he is really good. <laughs> So <laughs> I don't even remember that one. Oh man, I read that and I'm like, I'm I gotta bring that up. That was a good little pun. And uh oh, so yeah, I try to I try out a lot of my material on my patients. So my appointments tend to run very long. <laughs> yeah, just I, run your material. They don't even know. I just yeah, I just <laughs> spitball try material on people and, and generally don't take myself too seriously. So I always have a good time with my patients. I love it. Um well, so just Help people understand. So if they're listening, they're diving in this podcast, we're all excited to hear Dr. Gal, but just tell us where you're at. Give us a, like a current inventory. Where's what is where's Dr. Galler at and what are you doing right now? Just so we can land somewhere. Yeah. So uh I did practice in, for 20 years in downtown Manhattan. Uh built kind of my Invisalign kingdom there. Uh then I got burnt out a little bit, moved out to Chicago. Got a Illinois state license, started work in dentistry there. Then COVID happened and Chicago's like super shut down, super COVID shut down. So I moved out of Chicago for two years, moved to North Carolina, got a North Carolina state license, okay. started doing this line there. Um, and then I realized I'm not for the South. <laughs> okay. and, uh, I moved out to um, Vancouver. Now, um, now I'm in Vancouver, living the life in Vancouver. So I still I still live in New York. My kids live in New York. Okay. I still have uh, a New York residence. So I kind of moved between three locations. So Vancouver and then New York City and then Las Vegas. I'll do all my teaching out of Las Vegas. Uh, I, I pretty much do all my comedy out of Las Vegas now. So uh, in a normal 10 days, 14 days, I'll do 
you know, a week in New York, week in Vancouver, week in Vegas, and then a week miscellaneous. So I'm constantly on the go. Yeah, literally like some of the cool cities um, and in opposite ends of the, you know, of North America. I had to, we had to plug in North America because you're jumping into Canada there, but. Um, I take five hour flights across this country. Like people take Ubers. Yeah. You're just like, here's the next one. Right, I no weekly deal. take a five and a half to six hour flight. That's no big deal. No big deal. Um, well, I, I love that. Thank you for landing the plane for us. Uh, and so what I wanted to dive in today was a little bit of the, of the David Galler, Dr. David Galler's secret sauce. And, um, but, you know, as we were kind of chatting beforehand, I think, it, it can be easy for a young dentist to, to see what you're doing and, and feel, you know, get very enthusiastic about what you're doing and what you've accomplished. And even with a lot of the members of, um, you know, the AACA, the American Academy of Clear Aligners, they see the success, the Invisalign and, and the success there. And I think sometimes they want to jump to the success, but I wanted to kind of dive into the secret sauce of like process, how you think and, you know, where it all started from. I, and what I was really curious about kind of to kick this off was, um, and you you may not be this person or you may be this person. I was curious if this is what you imagined, where you're at today. Did you did you have a vision for this, the, the, the AACA, the, the comedy part, the dentistry? I, I'm curious of where that lands. Yeah, no, this is, I never... I never dreamed I could be living this life and and doing the things that I'm doing and leading dentists, other dentists. Um, I, I thought I'd be as regular dentist as can be and just kind of just doing what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, people who say I have this all planned out, I, I do not. I could see like one or two steps ahead always. Right. Um, I know where I want to be in a year. I know where I want to be in two years, but five years, 10 years, I, I didn't have a clue on it. Um, you know, I guess it all starts as whatever I'm doing or whatever I want to do, I want to kind of be the best at it. So okay. I will work extremely hard on whatever I'm doing, whether that's comedy or running the academy or being an Invisalign dentist or being a speaker or being an influencer or working on investments like we are now. You know, I try to work very, very hard to be the best at whatever I'm doing. Um and to be the best at it, it's just it's just grinding. It's just grinding. I wasn't the best Invisalign dentist back in 2004 when I kicked off, but you know, put a lot of years and a lot of cases and miles into it. And then one day I woke up and I'm like, oh yeah, I am I am better than everyone else. Same thing with the speaking. When I started speaking, I was excited, I was enthusiastic, but I wasn't talented in speaking and motivating. But put hundreds and hundreds of hours of stage time in traveling to cities, taking the gigs, nobody wants speaking in unimaginable locations to people who are half paying attention. And, you know, a decade later, you're like, well, no, I'm, I'm the top speaker now. I'm the top motivator. So, you know, people who expect to be the best at something right from the get go, it's a nice mindset. It's nice to be confident, right? You can't be the best at something Till you've put in hundreds and hundreds of hours into it, you know, you know, thankless hours with no end in sight, meaning never knowing what the final goal is. But then when you get there, when you do get to the top and you look back, you're like, oh, I could see it now. I, I see that these were all necessary requirements. But in the journey, you, you never you never see that now. Like right now, you know, you and I talked like we're getting into investments. Like right. I have this vision if I want to own 10% of 10 dental companies. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a vision, right? You have it kind of laid out. Yeah. So I'm like starting these investments. So I'm crowdsourcing dentists, you know, buying into private dental companies. We bought a right. toothpaste already. Now we're buying a software. So I'm six months into it, six months into this journey. And I... I'm not good at it yet. Like I, I still get on meetings and calls with investment people and I'm still Googling terms that they're talking about. You know, I don't know what, you know, two and 20 things that are common sense for you, like two and 20 or blue sky fees or carried interest. Like, I don't understand what these terms means. I don't have an MBA, right. um, but I'm learning and uh, yeah. learning. And maybe 10 years from now, I really will be able to kind of like be an investment, you know, dental investment or dental startup shark type of person. But, you know, right now I'm just trying to do the best I can on it. 
the the I could see it now. The dental shark tank. This would be nationally dental broadcast. shark tank, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I I appreciate you sharing that. I think um, it, when you were just talking about that, it remind it reminds me a little bit of uh, there was a a Jeff Bezos quote or whatever. At some point, it was like your your vision needs to be stubborn but your path to get there has to be flexible something of that nature so it's a, yeah. it's a stubborn vision like that is the the goal for you whatever you know what's in front of you right now and and growing this dental investment part of your life um now but you might might adjust or adapt the, on the way to get there um and so I think that's that's powerful what you're saying because you're gonna you're probably gonna fail a couple times, right? You're gonna run through something, you're gonna try something that didn't work, and I'm sure you had that experience when I mean let's take it all the way back to when you I mean basically you designed your own technique on Invisalign, right? So I'm sure it wasn't like first crack, we got it, guys. <laughs> um, but talk a little about that because that that must have had some humbling experience, and then it grew into something much bigger. So let's start from there. What what was that like? So, you know, there's two things that I try and always live by in terms of whether I'm doing procedures, whether I'm teaching, whether I'm leading, whether I'm investing, you know, whether I'm doing comedy. One of them is I'm constantly looking to improve. Okay. So even things that are like, there's a technique out there that I invented in 2006, 2007 called the Galler spacing technique, man. Yeah. And I run with it for 10 years. For 10 years, you know, you got people across the world using my technique called the Galler spacing technique, a way to do IPR. I'm teaching it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of hooked up a little bit into, you know, the education part. I'm, I'm running conferences, I'm running seminars, literally paid for my house. Um, you know, a serious part of my income comes from this technique. And then, you know, in 2020, I'm sitting talking to somebody and uh, something sparks in my head and I start tracing something out on kind of piece of paper. And then I have one meeting and I get turned down and I have another meeting get turned down. I have a third meeting and somebody goes, yeah, I could build something like this. And I speak with another guy who's an old friend of mine. And I run the technique by him and he's like, yeah, that might work, but do this and this and that. And then, you know, in 2020, 20, by, it was actually, it was actually November, 2020. I changed the technique to be the Galler Ustriker spacing technique. And, and we use a whole different similar, similar things, but we changed it to a more advanced, you know, technique with a new instrument with a better way of doing it. So, right. you know, and, and that's what we run today. And even two weeks ago, I made like a, a tweak to it. And again, when I'm when I'm tweaking stuff, it's not because it's not working. It's not because it's not popular. It's not because right. it's not successful. But I'm like, cool, that was good. But can I make it better? Will it make it better for the dentist? Will it make the end result better? Can I do this better? And I'm never afraid to even take my own stuff and be like, time to update, time, time to change, time to, you know, to make it better. So, you know, I have a, I have a signature course called the re-engage course. That's my yeah. Invisalign signature course. Probably half the people listening to this podcast have taken it, you know, at some point. That's where I teach dentists how to do Invisalign. And I teach it once a month in Las Vegas. And Steve, that course, I update six times a year. That's crazy. And it's the number one course. Yeah. And it's always been the number one course. You talk to any serious Invisalign GP provider, they go, yeah, re-engage. That's where I took it. And I'm teaching in two weeks. Two weeks ago, I'm sitting there, you know, on the PowerPoint, making adjustments, making things clear, making slides better, you know, making connections easier on it constantly. And most people look at it and be like, I got a horse that's running perfectly. Courses sold out three to six months in advance. Right. Got the name, got the logo, got the brand, got the results on it. And I'm just always like, I could be better. Like, you know, let's do this. This technique's changed. I got to update this. This has got to update. Like if you look at the handout from that course 2023 right now, what I'm going to run in two weeks, and you compare it to the 2020 version of the same dentist and orthodontics hasn't, I mean, teeth are teeth. The biomechanics are the same. But every update that Invisalign's come out, every update that I've kind of brainstormed, everything I've heard and tried, man, the course isn't even the same. And that's where most people won't change. Right. That's right. what I see the biggest problem, whether they're young dentists or older dentists, is they got a system, it's working, and they just run it. And by the time they realize it's too old, or the time they realize they wake up and they go, shit, we're behind, sorry, 
No, no you're, it, I mean, Nate, hey, podcast, you know. You okay, see. by the time people <laughs> wake up and go, ooh, I'm, I'm losing traction, I'm behind, that's too late. Yeah. The time well, to- Well, it's a much bigger upheaval process to reinvent yeah. yourself at that point. Yeah, the time yeah. to optimize, the time to push it is when you are ahead. When right. you're ahead, that's when you take chances. That's when you try things. That's when you optimize. That's when you're thinking the clearest. When you're behind, when the office is already losing revenue, when your production's already down, you're so nervous, you can't think clearly. And you make rash decisions. The best decision-making power I've ever had is when I am ahead. Right. Yeah. There, there's sense. there's a saying in our business, we call it commission breath. I mean, the client knows that there's something not right about this conversation. When you're behind, like you, you, you're forcing things, it's just not the way to be. It's just not the way to be. But what what, I, what I'm curious about is where that comes from. So I don't. Is that like is um, so that something you're wired with? Is that something you got from your mom and dad? Is that like where did that come from? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, um, I told you I was. We're digging into secret sauce. We're getting some recipes out of this. I mean, my dad, my dad was, my dad was loving that he was tough. It was never good enough. You know, he wasn't happy with the 92s push it. He put me quite hard. Mm -hmm. Um, So maybe it comes from that. um, Or just maybe I have an intense fear of falling behind. I have an intense fear of being outdated, becoming irrelevant. Um, You know, so that fear kind of, keeps me driving. Plus I love what I do. Absolutely love what I do. I mean, there's no doubt. Uh, I, and this is not me kissing your ass this is just observation, but I'm like, I, I haven't seen you lose energy in any of your presentations. And like <laughs> the guy just is running here. I, at one point I'm like, hi, he's going to, will he come out different today? No, just, just right through it. And you, you constantly have new attendance, which I think also can, that's the cool thing is you're adapting, you're growing, you're improving. You seem to have a, a new audience always at some point, there's new audience members in some, whatever capacity that is, uh, whether it's Invisalign or comedy. And there just seems to be this great energy that you feed off of that. I, at least I see, see it that way. I don't know if that's the case or not, but. Yeah. I mean, when you really love, love, love what you do, like a lot of people say, I love what I do, but they don't really love what they do. <laughs> right. When you really love, love what you do, man, there's an energy and excitement. I love teaching people. I love communicating. I love making complicated concepts uh, easy to understand. I love being a good communicator on that. You know, I love learning something and then trying to package it and teach somebody else, which which is also, you know, you know, I think one of the things if you're looking for things that make me different than other people yeah. is that most people learn something figure out something on their own and like they hide it, like they internalize it. Anything I pick up in my life, anything I learn, anything I teach myself, anything I come across, my first most excitement is how am I going to get this out? Mm-hmm. Like, how am I going to teach this? How many people's lives can I change? So like perfect example, Steve, so during COVID, I started this thing called intermittent fasting. I don't know if you ever heard of it. <laughs> Brand new but <laughs> right, like it's a diet fad, right? And I got real hardcore into it. I lost like 40 pounds. Wow. And I was like fired up. I gained it all back. But you know, like any good diet fad. <laughs> but at that point, you felt good. Yeah, I know. But when <laughs> I was in it, when I was in it and losing like pounds just flying off and I'm fitting into clothes I haven't fit into in 20 years. And I'm fired up and all, all that could, all that was occupying my mind is all right. How many people's lives am I, how am I going to package this out to the people? I'm going to coach people. How am I going to, am I going to create a WhatsApp chat about this? How many people are overweight who need to learn what I learned and how I'm going to help them get to the other side. And then we're all going to be skinny and blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of how my mind works. Why my mind works like that. I have no idea, (laughs) but anything I come across, I, my, my main focus is, okay, when am I going to teach this? How am I going to teach this? What are people's reactions going to be? How am I going to make this understandable? How am I going to market this concept? Which could be anything from an investment to a new joke that I wrote to some way of seeing the world to losing weight to anything. But you you for sure have an abundance mindset. Um, It's a positive mindset, but, but like you could be positive 
but not be abundant. And you, you definitely have a, like, there's plenty out there mindset. There's plenty out there for all of us mindset. Yeah. And, um, that's attractive. That's an attractive trait, uh, which is probably, probably why, um, you, you attract different crowds of different people in different industries, different, completely different industries, like dentistry and Tom, you're completely, you know, yeah. you know, separated, but your communication, um, and so when you talk about like why you think that way, you don't know, my, my curiosity comes in when you are going through these processes and you, and you're dialing in, like, I need to share this or here, here's a new process I want to work on. Is, is it like the next day? Like, do you, and this is some business tactics stuff, but are you calendaring this stuff? Is there like idea time? Then I see patients, uh-huh. then I, you know, or is it just, man, as you're running, maybe five hour flight, that's when you think through this stuff. I'm curious, like how your calendar aligns with that. Oh yeah, no, the ideas, they just come. I kind of shut this thing off. Um, (laughs) Yeah, no, I can't, I can't shut it off. So yeah, I don't have like, like brain, like I have a good friend. His name is uh, David Clark. He's in, he's a dentist in Seattle, invented the BioClear. So he has think days, literally sets a day where he'll just like from one to six sit in his office and think about ideas. That's not how I'm programmed. You're not, the, you're ideas, not <laughs> the ideas come in the shower. They come while I'm sleeping. They come while I'm watching TV. They come while I'm on a podcast. They come while I'm typing. I'm on WhatsApp. They just come. But I do like I have like I always have like my books. Okay. So you're ready to sketch. So yeah. Uh, this is 2023 ideas. Okay. So ideas pop into my head and then I'll write them down. And then, you know, I mean, like this book is filled with ideas. What is this one called? Ideal world. So <laughs> sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Ideal world. For those of you listening, he's flashing a black binder and a yellow pad. That is just old school, old school, handwritten. And, uh, Great minds think alike, you know, just ready to ready to rumble at any given point, you know, with an idea. So I think that's really cool. So and then do you just you you kind of run with an idea, one takes off or one doesn't, but you keep you keep trying. Yeah. Yeah. Ideas, some of them, half of them are not good ideas. Um, but some of them will stick in my head, they'll develop, I'll try them out in my partner. You know, she'll say, yeah, no, I'll, I'll try it on different people, see how the reactions are. <laughs> and then the really good ones get developed into either my book or get developed into posts that I'm doing on WhatsApp, uh, into my lectures, into my teachings, into into my being. So um, I want to talk about preparation. And I apologize if we're jumping a little bit, but you got a lot of things going on. So I have no choice, but to jump a little bit. So, um, on preparation, I'm thinking, and I, we're going to dive into the comedy stuff, but from, a, from a surface level preparation to see a patient preparation for, um, your course coming up, um, the big, big conference you run in July for the AACA, um, and, or preparation for the comedy, uh, like getting on stage. It, do you prepare a certain way? Are they the same? Is it completely different? Do you have a different routine? When you prepare, because I and the reason I'm asking this is because I look at you, uh, David, like a pro. You 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 um, work on things as a pro, and sure you were an amateur at one point, but you've become a pro. You're a pro at what you do. So, what type of preparation maybe do you go through? So I I intensely prepare. Um, okay. In any in any facet of whatever I'm doing, whether I'm doing comedy, whether I'm preparing for a course that I've taught two hundred times whether I'm preparing to tackle a new venture, I am an intense preparer, like uh, way harder than most people could fathom. I'll go way harder. And I think, you know, where that comes from is, you know, when I was in school, so either high school or college, I was smart, super smart. I went to an Ivy League school, Yep. but I wasn't the smartest. I wasn't, I wasn't 1600 SAT guy. Um, I wasn't standardized test a plus guy, but, and I know that, and that's okay. I'm smart, but I'm not 1600 perfect SAT guy. Um, I'm not just random. Like if we watch jeopardy together, Steve, you'd be like David's borderline special needs. (laughs) He has not answered one question, even close to correct. 
I, I don't know if he doesn't know history or if he doesn't know art or anything, but there's there's nothing he's getting correct. Yeah. But if we had like a history teacher, Steve, and you and I were in history class together, and she's like, chapters five and six on the test next week, I'll beat you every time. Mm. There's no way you can outwork me going into that test. Like so, I will sacrifice time, energy. I will push myself way past what other normal people will think would be preparation. So by the time we get to that test, I know everything on it. And that's how I used to prepare for school. And that's how I, you know, excelled in school and dental school and everything. If any any task given, I can outwork just about anybody. And then that's kind of carried over to my professional life. So whether I'm doing dentistry and I'm doing Invisalign and I'm trying to figure something out before we go into the procedure, I'm going to know a lot more than you do mm. in this procedure. Before we go into speaking, I'm going to know. So I go into a speaking audience, you know, most people maybe look up something on the speaker or heard something, but if you're sitting in my audience, I know everything about you. Mm. You know, we've got this game where I would memorize, I would, I would get pictures of what everyone looked like before you came to the course. And then I memorize your picture that is preparation. <laughs> so you walk into the course and I'm like, hey, Steve, how are you? Nice to meet you. And you're like, how do you know I am? I'm like, well, I prepared for this thing. Yeah. Nowadays, they put these uh, like UN tent holders in front yeah. of everybody. So it's kind of cheating. But <laughs> back in the day, I used to memorize everything. But if you come to my course, I'll have already looked you up and uh, read about you, memorized it, memorized a few facts about you. Uh, know where you practice, where you're at, associate, owner blah, 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 what your goal is, what your cases look like. And it's well, going about you. So Most people don't do that. Well, let's, let's, let's pull that apart just a little bit. The intense preparation, it's time for sure. You're, you're spending time based on your meeting tomorrow or next week or whatever it is, uh, the event to be. And is that really it? Is you're just spending more time than others to prepare? And you're not gonna you're not gonna wing anything. You're not gonna leave it to chance that that you don't know the answer to a specific question, or that you're not prepared to at least answer it. It's not uh, just time. It's time and intensity. Like I have a son. I'm sure he won't listen to this podcast. But you know, he's we'll in, send he's, it to him. We'll send it to him. He's he's in biology. In biology 101. He's in college. Yeah. You know, and he's like, you know, step one wants to be a doctor, and I'm like super supportive, and I'm like, dude, you got to hit the books every night. Like you go to, you know, this is no joke. This is how they weed people out. You know, if you want to go pre-health, you want to go pre-dent, you got to, you got to go hard. <laughs> they weeded me out. Yep. And he's like, cool, cool. But his hard is 10, 15 to 11 every night reading in the library. Mm. And I'm like, that's good. That's good. That's consistency. That's good. But when the strike, when the clock strikes 11, it doesn't mean you're like, cool. I did my work. I did my time. I get to right. go out. No, it's until you know this stuff inside and out until you're like throwing up with nerves right and i don't know if that's a great way to live i mean i got an ulcer in the second year of dental school so i don't know i don't know that i have the happiest <laughs> it's life, a give and but, take yeah, it's a give and take but at least if you want to I'm, I'm not saying it's the happiest life but i'm saying if you want to be the best at something and i'm not saying i'm the best at anything but if you want to you've got to go hard at it right you've got to intensely prepare yeah I, I well and i don't think you're saying that i think i you're point if if i'm hearing you correctly is the time is one part and to your point you can't just close the book at 11 but how much do you really want to know this stuff yeah how, how invested in it and you know you said sacrifice what i look at is the sacrifice is if you don't put in the effort you sacrifice being a doctor or being really good at this particular thing you get to enjoy the benefits for all this effort you're putting in right and it's different. It, that's, uh, you know, Zig Ziglar. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, like people people look at me all the time, you know, and they're like, wow, you have, you know, you have, you got 3,000, 4,000 gallerites that follow you. That's incredible. I'm starting my own thing. I'm excited. I want to do just what you do. I'm sure you hear, you know, oh, yeah. I want to do it. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm down for it. But if you, if you grab my phone on a Sunday, and I was supposed to get for a while back, if you take my phone, so my Android, a beautiful Android, right? <laughs> Every Sunday morning, it gives me a weekly report of how much time I spend on apps. Yeah. And I average 20 hours a week on WhatsApp. 
That's wild. 20 hours a week. I will answer anybody who texts me on WhatsApp. I will, I will, unless I'm literally on a plane or speaking, I will get back to you in 12. Like you and I, we've talked on WhatsApp. Right. Yeah. But I, I will answer anybody. So I average two to 3,000 messages a day on WhatsApp. That's wild. And That's I'll put wild. in 20 hours. Do that for 10 years, you'll have a big following. That's but most people just do like an Instagram post, <laughs> then they open up their consulting company, and then like a month <laughs> later, like I got two friends from dental school and one of my my sister's friends from California. And I don't understand why I don't have a thousand followers or why a thousand people don't want to buy my consulting services. And I'm like, well, I don't I don't know that you've had the intensity for long enough to kind of garner the respect you need to open up your own consulting company. Yeah, but first of all, I love I love the. I love that breakdown because that is a very real example of what you just described. Um, and I see it in my industry as well. It's like new advisors come in that they're they're like, how do I make it, you know, a million dollars in year one? Yeah. <laughs> and it's well, you can't not you can't just only call your rich uncle. You know, you gotta you gotta yeah. move on, you gotta prospect. But to your point though, it, it's there is, so if you're listening to this, there is no secret sauce. It's just hard work. <laughs> it's 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 just work. Um and we could break down work any way you want, right? Efficient work. You got to be smart with your time. No one to no one to you know turn the page. But um, I, I'd be curious. So when you think about investing, in in I'm talking investing in the sense um, of your of either time, money, people, or really experiences for you. Where would you say you've invested? Uh, and and I'll let you describe it however you want. Where you've seen what, some of the bigger dividends pay off, whether it was in a relationship or it could have been a book you read or a seminar you attended. But I'm curious for you what what maybe has helped you know dr- dr- help drive you forward a little bit. Investing in in which field do you mean, or just in general? And just in general, if there was one or two particular things that have that you've particularly invested, in. as people like re, as people invest in your reengage courses. That that's an that's an investment, right? That's an investment in in your material and and your technique. Has has there been something like that for you? Either relationship, education, time, money, whatever you want to describe it as. Um, I invest. I'll, I'll take it from two perspectives. I've invested a lot of the last fifteen years of my life of being on the road. Mm. You know, now it's like still on the road. It's New York, Vegas, Vancouver. That's just the last 10 months or a year that I just are in these three cities. Right. But the 15 years before that, I'll be in three cities a week. Mm. You know, I'll be in No Lie on a Wednesday night. I'm in Lansing on Thursday night. And then Friday, I'm speaking in St. Louis and then back to New York then back to my patients, then back next week to Florida and then back to LA. And only with that sort of long-term investment in getting out the road, meeting dentists, talking to people one-on-one, helping people, being a man of the people, can you really start to make a difference out there or get your name? But none come without sacrifices, Steve. It comes with tremendous sacrifices. Right. You're on the road, you know, relationships are not are not easy. Life is not easy. You I have, I never know where my favorite pair of shoes are. You know, they're mm-hmm. always somewhere. Right. Um, you know, I've, I'm, I'm great at professionalism, maybe haven't had the greatest personal life in terms of being everything for the people that are closest to or blood related to me. But kind of matter of mission, how to focus, how to think. And, you know, something's going to be sacrificed. You're not going to you're not going to be the best person in 17 things. So you want to make your choices right or wrong on, or sometimes the choices are made for you on it in terms of investing. The other thing that I invest in is trying to understand why things happen or what things are. So, you know, let's take the convention, for example. Yeah, so you, tell me you more know, about you, that. You, yeah. you've, you've been in a, you've been a good, you know, you know, you're, you're, you know, North Northwestern and, you know, your, your financial company and investment, all the doctors you've helped, you've been a good, you know, attendee, you've been a vendor, you've been a speaker, you know, three years, four years, you know, let's say right three years, I think you've been three, to like, yeah, three years, yep. three conferences. So, all right, conference one went well, yeah, 
But conference two, let's say the 2020, 2021 was cool. Yeah, it was great. You know, it sold out. 2022, like we changed a lot of stuff. We changed the breakouts. We changed where, you know, the convention tables were, you know, so that 2022 could be better. Yeah, 2022 was fabulous. The 2023, we changed it up again. Took the advice, read all the comments, talked to my key opinion leaders, talked it again. 2023, we noticed like a couple of trends one way, the other way, kind of took something. Boom, 2024 conference is going to be completely different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the when people, when you say investing, I invest a ton into looking back at things that I've done, whether it's professionally or for the academy or personally in comedy. And I'm like, what works? What doesn't work? Why doesn't it work? What's the trend? What's going to be so that come 2024, come 2025, I'm ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people finish an Invisalign case, let's say, right? 20 aligners in, 20 aligners out, you know, and it's kind of like 90% perfect. Most people are just so busy with their life or just don't care. They're just like, boom, let's just jump to the net. Yeah, make a couple more trays, let's go. But I don't know how many people go, all right, well, here's what was supposed to happen. Here's what actually happened. And then go, yeah, I know I can make trades from here forward. It's not that hard to finish from here forward. But how many people are going to sit down on a Sunday night by themselves on a computer and go, all right, here's where it was supposed to end. Here's where the teeth are supposed to be. Here's what they did end. Why? Like, why? Why? Why did this happen? Yeah, yeah, I don't no know if they're spending there's no that book. time. There's no book. There's no book. Nobody ever wrote about this. Nobody, there's no, there's no, there's no seminar to go. To. I mean, now there are because I wrote them, but <laughs> before that, like nobody, nobody takes the time to go like, what's the cause and effect here? But if you do that for long enough, then you start to see kind of this really big picture. And now you're like, all right, I understand what went wrong here. And now next time, oh, I'm a, I'm a step faster on the next case. You know, so that's that's a, a metaphor for the way I ran my Invisalign, why I became an Invisalign, you know, knowledgeable person that I could, I could look at a case and go, boom, that's what happened. Right. Well, because you know that a lot in. of people, yeah, I, I don't know that a lot of people do that both, let's just talk pigeonhole Invisalign, but how many people do that in their life? Like, here's what I wanted to accomplish. Here's what I did accomplish. Right. Why, why didn't I get, why wasn't the result where I wanted to be? What do I do to change that? I don't think a lot of people do that. Well, it's easier to blame, right? I mean, it's easier to say, well, uh, no one ever spent time with me. Uh, nobody, you know, that client didn't do this or that, that was never taught to me, right? It's easier just to complain and say next year will be different because I hope it'll be different, right? Yeah, I'm sure there are equivalents in investment, like in your life, right? You you put together something, it, you wanted a a 12% return and it came out at eight and you're like, all right, where was that four? 8% returns. Effing amazing. Like it's amazing. 8% return. Right. Boom. You know, everyone should be celebrating you. But you know, some people go back and are like, all right, where was that four points? Where, 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 what was the what was the mistake in the investment? What was what what went sideways? What can I learn from this bond market not being trustworthy or this, this, you know, this currency wasn't a good max with that. Like I'm just throwing out words here yeah, that yeah. I've learned yeah, yeah. recently in my investment no, world. No, it's fine. Fine. The hell I'm talking about. But I'm saying like the best people in the world take success. And then they go, here, what happened here? Why was it not what I wanted it to be? And what am I going to do to change it on it? But I don't think a lot of people do that. Well, I, no, I agree with you on that. I, I don't, I don't think so. And, and I think a lot of people are, are, are definitely trying to get better, but we're, we're just, and we'll wrap up on this point, but the, you see, there's so much like instant satisfaction today. It's like, I don't want to go backwards and plateau. Like, how do I, Get to the next Instagram page, you know, or whatever. <laughs> like, how do I just do it entirely different? But anyway, the 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 point is well taken. That um, so I I, I was listening to uh, a Tim Ferriss podcast, and he was interviewing Rich Paul the, most recently. And he, <laughs> Rich Paul, this guy, the, one of the most famous agents in the world, uh, LeBron's agent. I think it's Rich Paul. Anyway, he said um, he he looks at the dry runs, the invested in dry runs. So dry runs were all the, all the meetings he had that everybody said no. Yeah. And in your, when you brought that up about traveling and it just hit a, it hit a note there because you had dry runs, you were in front of people, you were trying to build a brand, you were trying to build the Academy. Um, you were building, 
and grinding and building and grinding and building. And, and, um, to your point, you, you learn lessons, you, you know, personally, professionally, um, financially. So, but you took stock in those dry runs and, and now going forward, you're now you're this product of Dr. Yeah. David Gallo, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. I think, I think people, most people just don't spend the time to figure out what they're doing and whether it's working or not. And then having the strength of character to change it, even when you're ahead. Right. And, and, um, but let's talk about this. So let's, let's flip the script now. Let's have some fun. We're going to wrap up with some fun. Okay. okay. I appreciate you've been, a, you've been a trooper already going 40 minutes plus with me. So I appreciate that. Um, and we could probably go another 40 minutes easily, but let's, let's do this. Let's talk about this full circle now at a comedy. And I, I was at one of your, you know, um, conferences and I saw you talk about the backstory to comedy, but I think a quick reference point in the, in this comedy, I think it's a good data point for us to st- just finish off with. It's fun. You love it. You're really good at it. And I'd love for you to just share um, where you're at now, but where it started from. And man, I mean, I, I, you have a, you literally have a residency in Vegas for comedy. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I think it's great. So, um, and you don't, by the way, you don't just end up in that to your point, <laughs> you know? So I'd love for you to just, let's share the comedy story a little bit. I think it's that, that is definitely a true passion of yours as I witnessed. Like the background, like how I got here? Yeah. Hi, just quickly. I mean, I'd love to just discover that a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, I've been speaking, you know, teaching dentistry for I don't know, probably about five or six years uh, uh, on the road constantly every weekend. And, you know, my friends who aren't dentists, I would come home from a conference and go like, yeah, I killed it. You know, it was funny. Everyone's laughing. <laughs> they were always like, are you funny, funny, or just you funny at a dental conference? Because if you're dental conference, nobody's expecting anything. So you make the slightest humorous joke and everyone's dying. Yeah. You know? And plus I'm making dental jokes because I know dental, I know dental offices, I know hygienists, I know assistants. And they're like, but are you funny, funny? Yeah. And I was always like, I don't know. So one time they came with me on a trip and I was doing some Invisalign lectures out in LA and we were driving through an area called uh, Burbank, which was where Jay Leno tapes and everything. And they saw this sign for a comedy club called Flappers. And they had an open audition competition where they're looking, you know, for new talent. And uh, I mean, comedians coming from all over the place. You get three minutes, three minutes. Wow. Well, yeah, which is like, hello, goodbye. Yeah, give me your best um, stuff, right? Yeah, three minutes, open audition on like a Thursday afternoon. They entered me into it. Um, I got up to three minutes worth of material to non-dentists, and I won the competition. Oh, wow, that's Straight awesome. Straight up, which pissed off all these co- real comedians who right. like, I really needed this job um, on it. And then, you know, they invited me back. It wasn't a well-thought-out plan because the 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 – the prize was being able to do shows at this comedy club, you know, twice or three times a month for free, but I was living, whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's very, there's no pay at that point. So I was living in New York and I win this competition and they're like, cool, we need you to come back October 15th. And I was like, wait, 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 wait a second. I didn't think this went through because now I got to fly back here, $800 round trip from New York, stay in a hotel, miss cancel patients, miss days of work, miss my family. Complete cost money. <laughs> 10 minutes on your stage. Uh, but that's kind of how it goes. And it's a, it's a passion of mine. I really love making people laugh. Really. I really, really love it quite a bit. And um, you know, that, you know, then I started playing New York cities or a little closer to home. And then, um got serious about it when i got to chicago and then um covid kind of put a damper on everything i did some zoom stuff i was writing a lot of material during covid um and then after covid when i started kind of teaching out of las vegas i i did a lot of auditions i knocked on a lot a lot of doors and uh one finally opened and um uh i don't i don't play around a ton of places i just really play that one place i kind of feel like yeah um yeah that's that's pretty much how we got here well, what I think is wild about that is you, you weren't 23 when this happened. Like this, this no, we're talking, yeah, just, we're talking like 30s. three years ago. You broke yeah. through, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I mean, yeah, my 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 Vegas residency didn't start till maybe 2022, March 2022. I was I was kind of just a traveling roadshow before then, like most comedians are. Not right. a lot of comedy, I got to be honest. 
Um, and I have no idea how to take it to the next level. Like I have no idea how to take from where I am now to where where Seinfeld calls and is like, David, I need a <laughs> zero idea. I never can see like five years. If I have a Netflix special in 10 years, go back and listen to this. Cause it's not like I have some kind of plan If I just got to do this and that. Uh, I'll, I'll replay this. Yeah. If that's the I case, have no <laughs> idea. This might be the top. Like that's cool. <laughs> and I'm cool with that. If well, the, the cool part is, is you, you did it. I mean, it, when you say you knocked on doors, like, it's like for me that I'm like sweating over here because I could just imagine the the grinding you had to put yourself back through after you're a well accomplished, you know, professional, and you're like I'm going to go back to grinding in a completely different category. And, uh, and when you call Las Vegas, you have to find a booker. And when you call Las Vegas comedy clubs that are on the strip, off the strip, you could probably do a stand. You could do an open sure. night. You could get there. But if you're calling like a regular comedy club on the Las Vegas Boulevard and going, hi, I'd like to perform in you. I mean, you have to realize you're like, you're the hundredth call they've gotten that day. Yeah. Um, but somehow it just got lucky. Stars aligned and got my show. Well, um, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And, um, you know, what, what's next? What are, what are we working on next? What, what can you, what insight can you provide next for, for either you, the American Academy of clear aligners, uh, what, what's next for the people listening from down? Yeah. You know, we're, we're continuing to grow the clear liner business. I mean, it, as crazy as it sounds, I mean, we're not even, we're not even close to peak. We're not even close to even the midpoint uh, on it. Uh, this clear liners and the offices that are set up correctly for it, that keeps growing and growing. You know, the gallery community, people who follow me uh, are doing great in business. They're living a little bit happier lives. I think this year, one of my focuses is going to be on happiness. I'm, I'm really yeah. getting into this happiness. It's like a thousand books out there on happiness. And um, I feel like a lot of people aren't happy. Like yeah. most dentists aren't happy. And you say, what am I working on over the next 12? Oh, yeah, I'm working on the investment and trying to figure out companies and stuff and getting dentists some fun on that. But uh, uh, definitely a focus for me this year, you're going to see is happiness and uh, how to try and create more happiness in people's lives. It's so messed up. We live in the greatest country in the world with the greatest wealth that any country, normal citizens here compared to any society roman greek any society in the history of the world we have more convenience we have toilets that flush we have drinking water we don't get cholera we have children who grow up healthy with hospitals and doctors we have jobs and cars we could be across the country in six hours and most people aren't happy steve no most people are not happy and i not saying i'm the happiest person but i know what unhappy looks like and I want to work on myself and then work on my followers are trying to find more ways to be happy, happy yeah. with just freaking life, happy with your day to day existence. And I feel like most people, specifically dentists, don't have that. And uh, I'd like to see if we can create some more happiness, especially with events going on right now. You got to you got to find something to be happy about. And, um, well, kind of my focus that. this year. I love that. And yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, if you could stop dentists from introducing themselves as burned out, you know, that would be a big deal, you know, and, uh, obviously you're, you're connected to way more dentists than I am, but I hear it all the time. <clears throat> they're just burned out. They're tired. Nobody's happy. It's a crazy, and they're not happy. And it's like doing great revenue. Thing. Right. You know, and, and that's why, you know, the money isn't everything, right? Yeah. You got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. You got a job <laughs> yeah. that works. You got two cars, three kids, uh, you got a pool, you get eat out twice a week. And you're right. like, are you really like happy, happy? You're right. like, I'm not happy just running. No, I, I think we all look forward to that. I think there's lessons in there for everybody. So I, I love that you're going to work on yourself, work with your, with, I love that you try to enhance the lives of the, of the people that you coach and develop and that are uh, following you. Um, and hopefully this podcast kicks that off the right way. We'll get you back on when you launch that bestseller. Um, and, you know, I think uh, from, from some, for some parting thoughts, um, you're you're generating a lot of attraction because you're authentic, you're positive, you do want to do things, you have this positive intent with your with your journey. And it's not a it's not gimmicky. It's very it's it's marketable because it's authentic. Uh, so I appreciate that. I know the I know the people who follow you do as well. And we're looking forward to the next chapter. So Amen. But, glad glad to be a friend, glad to be a part of uh 
all the energy and all the love that you bring. My, my doctors are lucky to have you in their corner. That's for sure. Well, I appreciate that. And um, so we'll wrap it up. Any final words? I, I do want to give you one final word on either one. How, how should people connect with you? Um, I'll let you broadcast uh, the Academy if you want. So I'll let you kind of wrap up. And of course, we'll put this stuff in show notes, but just curious if, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking to learn, if you're looking to learn Invisalign, if you're like, if you feel like, hey, I'm doing Invisalign, but I don't really know what I'm doing. You're not alone. That's how everybody feels. The training on Invisalign is poor at best. Um, that comes out from the way it is. The re-engage course, two-day course in Las Vegas. Give me, give me two days. I will make everything make sense. You will feel comfortable in this procedure for the first time. In terms of my following, the gallerites, it's all through the American Academy of Clear Aligners. We're an educational academy. We have resources to learn about clear aligners, but more than that, it's kind of a family. I share resources, I share vendors. We met Steve through Bianca. Uh, mm-hmm. three or four years ago. And he's like, this is a guy we could trust in the financial world. And I'm like, cool. If anybody has any financial questions, Steve's our guy. Uh, and we have resources like that that go well beyond dentistry and well beyond clear aligners. I mean, I'm working on stuff for happiness. It doesn't have anything to do with clear aligners. Right. But when I have to figure it out or when I have stuff to share, it's going to be going out on the American Economy Clear Aligners on WhatsApp. So that's how you can find me. Um, all right. Well, we'll, we'll- pump in the websites. We'll get them connected with you. And um, again, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I'm going to wrap this up for, for all the Bridge Dental Podcast listeners. Thank you to Dr. Galler. And, can I say uh, you can get this on Apple Tunes or wherever you get your podcast? You, you, you can get this podcast like anywhere. Download it anywhere. Google. You get this on Spotify, Apple Spotify. Tunes, or wherever you get your podcast. Or wherever you get your like podcast. That's how every podcast ends. Wherever yeah, you can so get your podcast. Wherever you can get your podcast. Right, and thanks. by the way, Bridge Dental Podcast listeners, this podcast was sponsored by yours truly, Steve Kuzak, Kuzak Wealth Management. And, <laughs> send me the link. Send me the link. I'll put it out. Send you the link. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for listening. Have a great night.